Hey, Mrs. Capper here. Great news, I finished that coffee table with the barn door. It took many weeks and a lot of hard work, but I think you're gonna like how it looks. So come on, I'll show you how I did it. So let's start from the beginning. This is how it all started. On our Kentucky farm, there was a couple of old barns that we we're gonna take down. I used wood from that for the barn bed uh, headboard, but then I also saw that there was this really cool door on there. Uh, I wasn't sure what was in the barn yet, um, to our surprise and dismay, lots of garbage. But bonus, had this beautiful barn door on it. So after taking off some of the wood, and uh, finding some other treasures. I had it laying on the floor there and I thought, you know, I wanna make something out of that. Wasn't sure what, so we brought it back and I took a look at it and I thought that'd be a really neat coffee table, especially if I could use those two ends on the left and if I could somehow separate it because it would have been too big and just use those two boards there. So, Mr. Capper, of course, helped me out, and what we did was we just separated it from the third board and took them home with us. So, the first thing that needed to happen was for it to get cleaned up. In the woods it was in, there was a lot of shade, so it really needed a good cleaning. So, I just got the pressure washer out and gave it a really good cleaning. And even with just the pressure washer, you can see that it really had some good potential. So once I knew it was salvageable, I needed to trim it down a little bit. It had some brackets underneath, so I needed to cut um, just on the other side of those. There was also a bunch of old nails in there, so I had to be careful uh, not to get too close to those. So I just trimmed off both the ends. One of them was really chewed up by the critters. And when I cut into it, beautiful red oak and nice grooves from wear. And I really didn't want to lose those uh, and, you know, sand them flat. So I needed to trim off some of those braces um, that we just kind of rough trimmed when we were back in the, the farm in Kentucky. So I cleared them off so they wouldn't be sticking out past the coffee table itself. The next thing, I loved the old original hinges. Look at all those old nails that are in there. Definitely wanted to keep it. And my idea was that I was going to leave them in and I wanted the hinge to lay flat so it would be laying straight down. But to do that, um, I had to trim out some of the wood there so it would be able to uh, lay flat because you don't want anybody bumping their knee into it. So I basically just took a chisel. You can see how dry in some places that oak was. And then uh, in other places, like in the other hinge, it was solid. So, it, you know, it's very old, it's very worn, but yet it was a pretty solid piece of wood there. So once I got them trimmed, I looked at them and that was good. I wanted them at a nice 90 degree angle, again, like I said, so you don't run into them with your legs. When I pressure washed the wood, it really brought out some of that roughness. And so <clears throat> I was going to just sand it lightly with maybe a 120 and a 220. And you can see there's a lot of original old nails in there. And I was very careful not to sand over those because I wanted to keep that rust. I mean, that rust is such a nice patina. Once you start sanding over it, uh, it'll just show like a shiny new nail, which I definitely didn't want. So the back side of it uh, was pretty rough too, um, but it wasn't uh, anything that I was gonna get too fancy with. So I just hit it with a 120, just to take the roughness off of it. Now the hinges, like I said, I wanted to save the original hinges and I wanted to save the patina that was on it. 
So I just gently used some steel wool and uh, just cleaned them off just to get the loose rust off. So what I used for the wood was a uh, brushing lacquer. I know you can spray some stuff on. Uh, you could use a poly. This was a lacquer. Um, it went on, it was real thick. It went on nice. Um, I had to do, I think, three coats total. And it really brought out the grain. And depending on where you were, um, even some of the staining from where the nails were, which I thought was really neat. I used a different uh, coat on the hinges and just use that on the table. And that was just the first coat. I ended up putting three coats on and so then I finished with that and that was a satin finish. I'm not uh, one that likes a lot of gloss. So this is what it looked like after all the coats. Now to find the perfect table legs. I had many ideas and came up with this one. So on our farm uh, we have a lot of fence posts that are from the old farm, lots of uh, very old ones. And I thought, you know, try to being authentic. I thought, you know what, maybe I can use those for legs. Now you're probably looking at them and thinking, are you nuts? There's woodpecker holes in them. Uh, there was probably termite holes. Um, and look at how rough they were. But I knew I could do something with it. So I just started stripping off some of the loose bark uh, the loose uh, wood that was out there. Uh, I also then just took the sander, first with a 120 and a 220, just to shine them up a little bit. And then I wiped on the poly and uh, did three coats of that. So you can see the transformation uh, from an old fence post into something new. So after I did that first leg, I thought, all right, it's going to work. And you can see all the woodpecker holes in that one. Um, so it turned out just as good as the other one. Started out pretty rough and then uh, turned out really nice. It was still wet in these pictures, so that's why it's a little bit shiny. So all four legs really actually did turn out pretty good. So I was pleased with them. So then it was how to get them on the, the table. So I lined them up initially, leveled out the table, just to take a look, because I wasn't sure if they were going to be the right size. I set it on the floor, just to take a look at it, and I thought, yep, I think this will work. So I got some steel plates. I ordered those, and they had the four holes in the outsides, but not one in the center. So I put them on there, and I ended up marking the holes, marked the center where I needed to drill a hole into that steel plate, and then also into that wood. For the legs, I used the five inch leg screws and put them up through the bottom. They actually went in pretty easy, even though it was solid red cedar. Then I just made a little uh, divot in the bottom so it would countersink the top of the uh, leg bolt. And then I used some shorter ones and attached it to the bottom of the table. So that's how it ended up looking. Just a recap of the journey from start to finish. A lot of work, but I think it was worth it. Let's take a look and what was I going to say?